Hello, I am Bentham and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. So in the previous episode, we did quite a lot of different things. We went and rescued someone from orbit. We went around the Kerbin and gathered a bunch of science. And we went past the moon and gathered a bunch more science. So now we have 250 science. So, you know, we need to go and spend that. So into the science lab we go and let's decide on what we want to get. So um, we've got things that cost 45, things that cost 90. So we can get 290 and a 45, I suppose. And straight away, fuel lines. Definitely getting those. We definitely need those. They are really important. And I've had trouble before with not getting them quick enough. Um, and then we can either get solar panels or science. And I think we'll go for solar panels. That seems like the best idea at the moment. I'll do the science stuff next. And then we'll spend our remaining 45 on a bit more um, engine stuff. So over into the contracts area, there's probably some more stuff to get. And indeed there is. So science data from the space around Kerbin. Well, that's a piece of cake. So we'll take that. And then we've got um, testing something while landed, and I just accept those by default. I don't know whether they earn me anything. They get me some reputation. And then we've also got science from around Moon. And that's where we're going today, actually, so that's good. And we also have Explore Ike. So, yeah, we'll go for that, I suppose, because it's... Um, and Minmus as well, because they expire never. So we might as well accept them now, and then later on we'll do them. So that's what we've got now. Um, Ike, Minmus, a couple of things to test while landed. Uh, data from the moon, data from Kerbin, and um, also we need to explore the moon. And we've done part of that, but we need to finish that off. So, um, there we go. So, on to today's missions. So, here we are, and off we go. And this is, um, this is the Moon Orbiter 2. Uh, we're going to go to Moon Orbit again, except this time properly, because um, last time the Moon Orbiter didn't actually orbit the moon. It just sort of went past. This one's going to make a proper orbit, and... Um, you can see it's a little bit different, so I've added in... Well, I've taken out some of the, the solid fuel boosters and replaced them with liquid fuel rockets because they're just better, generally. They're more useful, and they seem to have more thrust to them, so you can get a bit further um, with them before they run out, uh, as sort of evidenced here with the fact that they're still going now. So um, what we're going to do is gonna we're going to go into moon orbit, but we're going to go a lot lower this time, because last time we were still high above the moon. This time we're going very low above the moon, like pretty close to the ground. Closer to the ground than sea level is, is to the ground. That sort of thing. Um, at least some of the time anyway, maybe. I don't know, I forget what the exact altitudes of, of, of things are there. But anyway, th we're on our way up into orbit. Um, and uh, w the we've added a, another stage to this, so as well as the big, the, the, the big main stage that we've got right now, which is the one that takes us the furthest, um, well, we've extended it a bit, so the engine has to work a little bit harder to get us where we want to go. But we—it's—it's it's enough to keep us, uh, to keep us getting places when we're already fairly high up. Um, you see, I accidentally um, missed the apoapsis there, but whatever. Um, so the stage I have at the top is just this tiny little thing. It's like the smallest fuel tank I can currently get with the smallest engine I can currently get on it, just in case we need to do a little bit of manoeuvring just at the end if this stage runs out or whatever. Well, anyway, um. We're into orbit, and this time we're not doing any sort of fancy return traject free return trajectory thing. We're just going to go to the moon, the, the most efficient way, um, and that is to point at the ground and then go around. Until there's there's the sunset, by the way. I thought I'd do that again, because you know, since what did I do? Sunrise last time. I think it was sunrise, and this time a sunset, which is generally more pretty. So you know, um, so uh, try getting the burn right. I sort of it doesn't tell me what my estimated burn time is, so I end up. Um, starting and then stopping and starting again um, but we get it done and then we uh, we're on our way to the moon so off we go a thousand times warp goodbye to the earth as it spins away and then round to the periapsis we get a bit close and sort of overshoot a bit but it's not too much of a problem this craft is a little bit unwieldy to to steer if you watch the nav ball I do overshoot a lot of the the markers that I aim for but there we go, our periapsis is down to 12 kilometers, and then it's probably going to drop a bit more once we um, circularize the orbit. So, spinning around again, overshooting again, correcting again, and then down we go, tweaking it carefully, and then we're down to something around 12 kilometers. I, I don't know exactly what it was, but pretty close to the ground. Um, and the reason for this is accuracy. Because, well, first of all, we do our normal science. We do the, the materials bay, and then we do the goo, and then we do a crew report. And then it's time for the EVA report, and that is the meat of this particular mission. Because we hop out, and we get an EVA report for um, above the moon's highlands. And then what we do is we warp along a bit, and then we hop out again. And we do another one 
for above the far side crater and get, we get that transmitted and then we go a bit further around and you can see where this is going at this point basically I'm gonna do a complete orbit of the moon and I'm going to get signs for every single biome that I pass over so um, so far we've got highlands and the far side crater and you can also we can get some extra signs from each of them if I can be bothered it's not as much you can do it I think about three times and you're still getting signs from it which is annoying because it's an EVA report so you have to hop in and out every time anyway we walk along a bit and then we get to the Midlands so we get some signs for that and then we transmit that and on we go and then I'm using the Sun to illuminate the craters behind on, on the dark side of the moon it's sort of cheating because I'm sort of um, using the light engine to cheat well, we get another crater that I can see thanks to the Sun's glare being over the moon rather than behind it or whatever um, and then we go around to yet another crater I think yeah that's the east crater and transmit that as well and basically we're, we're getting tons of science from this I think it's 24 that you get from um, each bit of science that we do and then you can try again and get I think six or whatever or five and it keeps going like that so then I try well I was gonna try and get the twin craters but I realize I'm far too high above them but the crater directly above is a Midland crater or a Highland crater I think it's Midlands because we're in the Midlands right now so as we fly over I repeatedly do EVA reports to try and get it but unfortunately I don't so we'll just have to try and get another one later on and then there's a lot of nothing for a while so I just uh, warp around there and over to this crater which is and when I do the science in a minute I'll find out what it's called it is the far side crater Wait, did I say far side crater before? I may have done. Was that east far side or is this east far side? I don't know what my crater names are. Anyway, that's one of the craters. And then this happens to have a canyon on it. So all we need to do is warp over to this canyon. And then as we pass over, do a bit of science there. And uh, try and time it right so that we get it when we're actually over the canyon. And there we go. We've got some canyon science. So moving on, we now want to try and get a Midland crater because there's quite a few coming up. So um, after we do a, bit, do a bit more canyon science and a bit more midland science, um, you can see that there's two craters um, just ahead of us. But we are passing directly in between them. But anyway, I, it's it's worth a shot trying to get the science off them in case the biome edges are a bit rough and there's a chance of nabbing it. But unfortunately, no luck there. So we just get some midland science transmitted anyway, and then on we go. So uh, next up, well. There are a couple more Midland craters. You can see there's one where we skim the bottom of it, but then there's one where we go straight through the middle. The only thing is the one we go through the middle of has an absolutely tiny um, actual biome in it because I've got a, a biome map up on um, next to this while I'm playing. So uh, we missed well, the one that we try skimming over. So now we've got to try this. This is the last chance, basically, before I leave. And we've got to time it absolutely perfect. And we do, and we get the Midland Crater Science, and I, I punched the air with that one because that was absolute um, precision there, being directly over the very center of that crater at the exact right time and pressing the button. Especially with um, a weird thing that I've been experiencing recently where um, right-clicking doesn't always work. I had to right-click on things a lot of times to get them to go properly. Um, I seem to remember it being mentioned by some other people on, on the forums or somewhere. Um, so it may be, may be something to do with switching to 64-bit or something like that. But anyway, um, time to go home. We got all the science that we can off the equator. And um, after doing the burn, I realized that we've actually got a fair bit of fuel left. There's all this. And then there's the extra stage that I mentioned earlier. So we probably could have actually gone into a more wonky orbit and got some science for a few more craters and things. There's still the poles and the polar lowlands to, to get science from. And I've just um, I've not done anything with those yet. So, you know... The Orbiter 3 will be a thing one day. But anyway, it's time to go home, because we I'm not going to bother with that for now. Because, you know, I just want to get enough so that we can um, get a, a lot of extra equipment to land on the moon with. So I'll uh, get a bit of uh, random Kerbin science done. And then some uh, high above Ker yeah, so some moon science and Kerbin science. And that means that we had three different messages about contracts. We got the... Um, Science above the moon, science above Kerbin, and we'd also completed the science above the moon part of the uh, Explore the Moon contract. So, lots of lovely money there earned. And so it's time to come back, and here we go, um, flying into the atmosphere at three kilometers a second. And look at those flames, and they get pretty. Look at that, it's crazy. That's like one of the coolest um, re entries I've had with something. It's a shame it wasn't shaped in a more cool way, like a space shuttle or whatever. But anyway, down we go, losing insane amounts of speed, because it turns out I was a little bit steep with my entry, I suppose. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure 
I'm not that well versed on exactly what altitude you want your periapsis to be at when you're returning from the moon and places like that, so I just go for about 25 and that's usually more than enough to get us slowed down so you can see where here we go. And I use the moon's glare, the, the sun's glare again to work out where we're landing. I decided to burn out that remaining stage and then I just dump the other stage that we had because there's not that much point burning it. We'd pretty much come to a stop in midair if we did that. So parachutes are deployed and we can use the, the falling stages to determine exactly where the ground is and there it is. And then one of the parts stays um, intact so we can use that to mark where the ground is when we're actually doing the landing and work out when we should stop using time warp because, you know, I'm impatient like that. And so there we go, we've landed and then there's time to do a bunch more science. I did flying above the desert just before I landed and then there's um, crew report of the desert, EVA report on the desert and so on and so forth. And then back we go and we've got over 300 science now from all of that. So now it's time to go spend it. So in, into the science um, thingy we go. And um, we've got, we can buy, well the first thing I do is go for finishing off that particular tier that we've got there. The, the tier with the four different things in it. You can't see my mouse because I'm, I didn't record my mouse for this. So um, we just need to decide on which three to get now from um, our selection here um, and in the end I decide on getting the science one or in a second I do there we go I get the science lab and the thermometer and then I decide to go for this one which has all sorts of interesting like SAS and R RCS um, control surfaces and pods it's a very multi-purpose tier that particular one and then for my final uh, purchase I go for big rockets so there we go and um, I think at this point we are very much ready. Oh, watch, oh one, one more thing though, we need to go and look at contracts again. Um, let's see. So there's a few more now, we've got plenty flag on the moon. Well, that's what we're going to do next episode. So, you know, definitely get that. And then there's just a couple of random little things for um, testing engines while landed. And I may as well um, take those. And I may even do them off, off screen, to be honest, because, you know, it's just standing on the launch pad and pressing go with something. Anyway, that's our current sign selection, and that is today's episode. So I think we are very much ready now to go to the moon, and so are the contracts. They wanted to explore the moon and plant a flag. So, um, yeah, and then we can move on to Minmus and then Ike, but probably Juno first, honestly. Anyway, um, until then I shall say goodbye, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.